The following is a presentation of the Match Talk Podcast Network. It's time for the ODU Wrestling Monarch Matcast, a show dedicated to all things related to the Old Dominion Wrestling Program. On the web at monarchmatcast.com. Now, here's your host, three time National Wrestling Writer and Broadcaster of the Year, and 2004 ODU alumnus, Jason Bryant. Episode 69 of the OD Wrestling Monarch Matcast. Jason Bryant here with you, talking with our newest assistant coach, Steve Bleiss. Joined the staff this season, celebrating Christmas this time of year up in his native mitten. That is the state of Michigan, Chelsea, Michigan to be exact. Steve, welcome to the program. What's up, Jason? It's nice to be on, man. Obviously, this is a bit of a role reversal normally, but uh, see, you're not in Norfolk right now. You're back home in Michigan. So we, the first thing we can talk about would be the weather, but you're, you're kind of embracing the winter time like I am up here. Yeah, true. You know, I've uh, I've been pretty blessed. It's been, you know, 50 to 60 degrees in Norfolk. Um, I, I'm actually staring out of my parents' yard right now, and it's got a nice uh, one or two-inch coat of snow on it. So, uh, you know, I'm getting a taste of the cold, but uh, while all my friends are suffering in the cold, usually this is my about a week break where I get to experience some cold and then go back to the nice uh, climate, which is Virginia. So you're from Michigan. So again, being used to that cold yes, weather, you know, you end up wrestling in the in the Midwest. So cold winters are something that that you're you're akin to. Coming out of high school, I, I was curious, what did you know about Old Dominion while you were in high school? Um, you know, I didn't know a whole lot about Old Dominion. Obviously, I knew they were in Virginia. Um, you know, I didn't know a ton about the program. I knew they were in the MAC, but. Uh, you know, like if you're a mid Midwest kid, you know, you're around big 10 wrestling all the time. And I mean, for me being a kid from Michigan at the time, there's three division one, well, actually four division one programs. You got Michigan, Michigan state central and Eastern was in the picture at, at the time. So, uh, you know, I, all, all the wrestling I team was in the mid Midwest for, for the most part, I didn't know a whole lot about the program. There are a lot of Michigan ties to old dominion. Once you look at it in hindsight, obviously coach Beasley's there with you now, but you know, Brennan Brumley's from Michigan. There's a number of guys that, that came through and, you know, they're recruiting Michigan pretty hard now. And uh, how much of how much of that do you think has is, is been kind of interesting to watch over the years? Like, oh, wow, that guy, that's Michigan ties from Old Dominion. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, you know, we're starting to, you know, get our foot in here, too. Right. Um, you know, we're starting to recruit some more Michigan kids. Um, obviously, there's there's a lot of talent in the lower peninsula of Michigan as a whole, you know, Um not just from my experience competing here, but uh, just from kind of watching the state of Michigan at, at you know, the, the national tournament or just throughout the college ranks, right? You see a lot of guys having success and, you know, you're like, wow, you know, this kid from, from Michigan who didn't, you know, maybe do a ton in high school or maybe, you know, maybe he did a lot, but he's still doing really, really well. So I think there's a lot of good, good wrestling here. And, uh, you know, obviously since it's, since it's cold outside here, you know, you're either going to play basketball or you're going to wrestle. And I think the tougher kids are going to wrestle. When it comes to choosing a college, you started your career at Northern Illinois, which was in the MAC with Old Dominion. You're a four time national qualifier. Yep. After two years, you transferred to the University of Minnesota and truly embraced the cold weather. And first things first, uh, your experience at Northern Illinois, that's where you first met Coach Daryl Thomas. Yeah, Daryl, Daryl was my coach for, for the first two years. And it was, it, it, it was great for me, honestly. I, uh, that that was the first time obviously going into college and having a guy who was fresh out of college, ready to scrap, ready to wrestle. Um, Daryl was crucial in the part of my just development a, as a whole, you know, he spent countless hours with me on the mat. You know, sometimes I go pick him up at night and be like, Hey, Daryl, you know, I need you to wrestle with me. A, I got to lose some pounds, but B, you know, like I still need you to teach, te- you know, keep on teaching me stuff, keep on learning. You know, you got to be a student of the sport. And I think, I think the younger you are in your career, you can put the miles on. You can you can really learn a lot, and you can really work work really hard early in your career, and uh, you know you can figure a lot of stuff out because you know for for me being from Southeast Michigan and going to a smaller high school, I uh, you know I did a lot of wrestling with coaches because I couldn't wrestle with a lot of the guys on my team. So uh, it was it was important for me to really have that hands on feel, and I think as a 
as a young buck, you can gain a lot of ground just always going with your coach. When it comes to your college career, again, we mentioned you four time qualifier. You were seated three times. You finished in the blood round on two occasions, and that's got to be one of the most gut wrenching feelings. I mean, I, you know, how how much does that experience coming up just short now drive you as a coach? Yeah, you know, um, I I feel like I I know what it takes to get there. Um, but at, at the end of the day, I feel like I know where my shortcomings were as a c- competitor and I know where I can make a, make, make more of a ground as, as a coach. Um, maybe, maybe some lessons it took me later to learn in, in, in my career, I can kind of get instilled in my guys early on so that they don't have the same problems or maybe same shortcomings that, that I did. But as, as a whole, um, you know, I, I would say sometimes the ball just doesn't bounce your way. You know, you can do everything right, but at, at, at the same time, you know, sometimes, you know, you don't always get, get, get what you want, but that's, that's, that's just how life is, you, you know. Um, I've, I've accepted that, moved move past it, and I think it's going to make me a really, really good, good coach because I'll be able to sit there and, you know, I've, I've got sympathy for guys, you know. I, I, I know what it's like to compete hurt. I know what it's like, you know, to go through some mental struggles, but at, at the same time, you know, you, you gotta be tough. You know, you gotta play the hand you're dealt. You gotta go out there and wrestle. You gotta go out there and you always gotta be ready to scrap no matter what. You said you competed hurt. And I think that might be the understatement of your career. Cause when you were here at the university of Minnesota, I, I covered a lot of the gopher matches in that era. I mean, how long did it take the trainers to get you ready? You had you had more tape than they had in the bag, and you had the shoulder break. I mean, what what? How many injuries were you wrestling with at probably the the worst of it? Uh, you know, I don't want to go too into depth. Like, I'm not going to make excuses. <laughs> I, I'm not asking for excuses. I'm just curious. So you were you were like a walking athletic trainer's nightmare. Like, geez, we got to tape up lies. This can take yeah, forever. Unfortunately, unfortunately for, for me, we had a really good trainer at the University of Minnesota. Curtis Simondat did a really good job getting me all buttoned up. Um, you know, I, I just got my shoulder fixed. This is going on the seventh month that I'm out of rehab. So I'm pretty much 100% good to go now. But uh, I, I had to get my shoulder fixed after the year. You know, my knees are bothering me. But at, at the same time, too, though, like I, I made a commitment to them that as soon as I came there, I was going to take them at you know, rain, sleet, or shine, no, no matter what happened, I was always ready to scrap. It didn't matter who it was that stood in, in front of me. If I was, you know, if, if, if I could take the mat, I was going to take the mat. I, I'm not going to sit out because I wasn't, you know, I don't know if, if I'm a hundred percent, nobody's really a hundred percent in, in this sport. You're, you're expected to take the mat if you're a leader. So, you know, that's kind of the role that I took, took on. When it comes to the job at Old Dominion, explain the hiring situation. I mean, were, were you approached? Did you see the opening and be like, ah, I'm interested here? I mean, how much, obviously, that relationship with, with Coach Thomas played a role, but uh, take us through the process of, of, you know, leaving Minnesota and heading to Norfolk. Um, so, honestly, the, the process was, was I was, uh, so it was after, it was after the national tournament got, got done. Um, I was running my practices out at Blaine high school. Cause I taught a little bit of freestyle there during the spring semester. And, uh, Daryl called me during practice one day. So I called him back when I got to my car and, uh, you know, he's like, Hey man, you know, I know you love wrestling. I know you've always talked about wanting to be a coach. Why don't you come on here and just check it out? We got an opening as a volunteer and you can let me know what you think. And, uh, you know, I, I went out there with my eyes open and, uh, you know, I really hit it off with, uh, obviously I hit it off with Daryl, but I hit it off with Steve too. And, uh, you know, I felt like it was a good, good fit for me. You know, um, you can always learn a lot working with Steve and, and, you know, especially working with Daryl, somebody that, that I was already comfortable with, already had a good working relationship with. It was, uh, it was really nice for me going to someplace with a little familiarity. What's interesting is is you bring up the familiarity because you cross paths with I don't know ODU guys I mean just in the conference but even you know you're wrestling in Minnesota you, you're you're wrestling Larry Early who you're now coaching at Old Dominion so I yeah, mean yeah. ODU guys have been in your way a lot during your career. Yeah 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 for sure I've wrestled I've wrestled McCarty I've wrestled Mikey I've wrestled Larry I've wrestled a lot of Old Dominion guys so Steve's seen me a couple times. Yeah, I'm just because I'm sitting there looking at it, and I remember the draw one year, and Hayes was having a really good year, and I'm like, crap, he's got Blyce again, and I was like, it's an overtime. Ah, oh. it was like, 
so close. And then, you know, it was one of those things like, ah, oh, that Blyce guy, now he's on staff. Go figure. So uh, now. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I, I didn't look forward to wrestling a bunch of old Dominion guys <laughs> just because I knew that Coach Coach Martin, man, he's one of the best scouters in the game, man. I knew he, I, I, I knew he had my number for how I wrestled because he's been watching me since my freshman year when I wrestled Makati. Now that also brings up another point. What's it like hearing him in on the mat and now coaching with him? I mean, he's got he's one of the most uh, probably annoying presences as an op- op- opposing coach or wrestler. And now, what's it like to compare those experiences? You know, we're actually a little more similar than I thought. The guys call us Steve Squared. Um, <laughs> oh boy, similar. We actually dressed the same for the duel the other night. We both wore blue pants and a gray shirt. It was actually kind of funny. Um, he couldn't quite match but, your hair, yeah, though. We, we actually think somewhat along the same wavelength as far as wrestling goes, and it's nice working with a guy because his his emphasis is really like he can pick apart the finer points of technique that I don't quite see yet. So he just, you know, he sees things on a more fine, minute detail level than what I don't see. And he also knows the guys really, really well. As You know, this is my first year here. He's been with these guys a couple of years. He kind of knows their habits and stuff. What's the funniest thing you've seen Steve do in the time you've been there so far? <laughs> um, I was actually getting a drill in. Um, he he brought his son in to wrestle, and uh, I was wrestling with his son, and <laughs> his son was having str- like he was kind of struggling to finish in some some single legs, and I mean as as he should, I kind of got a rubber knee and I was giving him a hard time. And he, he went to whip his head up and he split my chin open on a single leg. I ran back to the training room, taped it up and came back and finished the rest of the 45 minute go with him. Oh, Max, Max, Max. That's going to be interesting. Yeah, yeah. Max is uh, a, <laughs> Max is a good kid, man. You know, he's, he's, uh, he's always, he's always looking to get some extra work in, which is, which is good, man. He's part of the Martin family, which always means he's, He's always on the mat. When we look at settling in, before we talk about this year's performances and such, what do you like about Norfolk so far? Well, uh, obviously it's not freezing cold. I mean, the coldest you're going to get is like 30, 35 degrees. And, you know, we kind of talked about this a little bit. I mean, that's when people in Minnesota break out the shorts and T-shirts. They, yeah, in Virginia, all hell breaks happen. loose. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you you might as well say once it hits 50, 60 in Minnesota, people are like, all right, summer's here. I'm throwing away the winter clothes. I refuse to go back to that. Yeah, it could drop in. You could get like a weird April snow. You're like, nope, nope, shorts are on. That's yep. that's what it is. Yeah, yep. you got people just fighting that. They refuse to go back to the cold. We did it for spite when I guess what was one of the last couple of years I was there, it, it, we had a, had a snow and that meant like you were off for a week. Actually, unless it was yeah, seventy the next yeah, day, because that that's been of salt down there. Yeah, my home. T- I'm, Paco- I'm from Pocosin, right across the river. We had one plow, and I think it was on the front end of a short bus, so it really actually wasn't a plow. Uh, but, no, you no, know, no. we got a couple of those in the neighborhood here. But I think we had a big snow, and it was like, you know what? Let's have a cookout. So we grilled out just to spite it. It's me, Jeff Rusak, Chad Filson grilling out. You know, Joe Wright just having <laughs> some. Uh, that, that was the old days. We'd see snow, we'd grill out. <laughs> yeah, that's what. That's what coach said too. He's like, you know, once you see snow down here, man, it shuts down for a couple of days. They don't have the, they don't have the means to really take care of that because they don't expect snow or cold down here. And it's something we, 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 again, we mock it, we mock it, but now here it's like, Oh, yeah. it's going to be no problem. I'm having to sell this whole NCAAs in Minnesota thing. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but having to say, no, it's no, so- it was warmer in Minnesota than it was in Pittsburgh and Cleveland and two days of St. Louis the last couple of years. So food for thought. Now <laughs> getting into this year's, season what are your thoughts on the season so far coming off a win against siue granted larry early dropped a match to justin ruffin that's uh that's a hard a big upset that, that made some headlines nationally but uh overall thoughts on the season so far from your perspective overall thoughts moving so far we got a lot of young guys who are looking really really tough and we, we got a lot of guys in with within the lineup who who are you know making making strides um I would say our, our guys do a really good job of getting in their one-on-one work and the stuff that they know that they need personally to be successful on the mat. Cause you can't, you can't tailor make practice towards every single guy. You have to make it towards the unit as a whole. So, you know, I, I'd say we do a really good job of doing our one-on-ones and getting our hands on guys and really uh, making, making sure that they're, 
ready to wrestle in, in the areas that they're proficient at and also getting work in the areas that they need some help on to make sure that in every competition, we're constantly improving in some area in some way, shape, or form. And what, what do you think Larry's got to do now to improve? I mean, that's, 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 that's a tough loss. I mean, that's a guy you've, you've felt before. You know what Larry wrestles like, you know, in practice and in competition. So what adjustments is he going to have to make over the break here? Um, you know, I would say for, for, uh, Larry, you know, he's, uh, he's a very good wrestler. He's got some unique unorthodox style stuff. I would just say maybe for him moving down the road, you know, creating a couple more opportunities to score, because when, when there's a bunch of action, he's probably going to be better, you know, it rather than just kind of sitting around because anybody can win a one takedown battle match. I mean, you can get beat by somebody that's not quite as good as you because you were just kind of hanging around. So, you know, you, you got to make sure that you're always pushing the pace. And I think that he's got enough offense. He's, he's a pretty crafty dude. You know, even if, even if a guy gets in on him, it's not the end of the world. He's, he's a very resourceful kid. He's got a unique body type. He knows how to wrestle. So I just think that getting him in wrestling positions is going to favor him rather than a bunch of stagnant action rather, you know, switching gears a little bit. What have you learned about yourself in the first couple months on the job? I would say, you know, I kind of look at wrestling from a different standpoint now, right? Like, you know, now I'm teaching guys to do things, how I think that's the right way to do it. But, uh, you know, there's obviously a bunch of ways to skin a cat. Um, but I would say I've, I've definitely emphasized more on mat wrestling than I have in the past. I didn't always have the best mat game in college, but now I feel like that was maybe one of my areas where I could have worked on and developed a little more, especially younger. Um, if, if you can get a guy who's pretty decent at hand fighting, pretty decent on the mat, pretty decent at shot D, he's already going to be hard to beat. Now you just got to hone those skills a little bit. Moving forward, when we look at this is a you know volunteer coaching position, what are your ultimate career goals now? I mean, have you have you decided that far in advance on what you want to be, or is, is coaching kind of it, or is it something's like I'll do this yeah. for a little bit and, and figure it out from there? Yeah, no, I um, I, I kind of knew early on once I got into wrestling, I really got into like uh, probably my junior year of high school when I was you know really uh, thinking about what I wanted to do for the rest of my life because you got people that's right around the time where people are like, what should you major in? What should you do this? You know, I had no idea what I wanted to major in, but I knew that when I went to college, I wanted to scrap. I wanted to wrestle. I wanted to get my hands on somebody. So I didn't care so much what I got a degree in, but I knew I wanted to coach at some point. And uh, just cause that would, that's like what would truly make me happy. Um, I don't think working a desk job is cut out for me. Um, I, I, I just don't. I, I think that the, the coaching aspect of things still being a part of the team, um, Seeing the development in guys on a consistent basis, whether they don't see it or not, like I, I see them getting better on a daily basis. I see them better getting better on a weekly basis. Every time they step on the mat, they're making a, you know, they're making adjustments. They're getting better. They're figuring things out. So like seeing seeing them kind of fit the pieces of the puzzle together is kind of satisfying. But I would like to be, you know, I'd like to be in wrestling as long as I possibly can. I'd like to make it a, you know, total. Uh, I'd like for my most of my life to uh, be with, with wrestling. I love, love being a coach. I love being a part of a program. And, you know, it's, uh, it, it doesn't, honestly, it doesn't feel like work to me. It's something that I really genuinely love to do. So I don't view it as a job. Coming through Christmas, we have, you know, no Midlands is officially scheduled, no scuffles officially scheduled. South Beach Duels is on the schedule this year. And granted, the schedule has been tweaked over the past couple of months. So as of right yes, now, who is, who is Old Dominion scheduled to wrestle in the South Beach Duels down in Fort Lauderdale? I know the first day we wrestle in Missouri and Minnesota, so that'll be interesting, you know, competing against some of my friends and coaches against Minnesota. And then uh, I want to say we wrestle Wyoming. Yeah, Wyoming's South the last Dakota I State. heard. Yeah, it's either South Dakota State, North Dakota State, Wyoming. I'm not 100% positive, but I know for sure the first day it's Missouri and Minnesota. So we're kind of geeked up for that, ready to go. Um, but obviously, South, South Beach Duels, it's just, for, for us, it's not so much like, it's not a break from the cold like a lot of teams get, but it's just, it's a nice, it's a nice spot to go and wrestle some tough, tough teams, tough competition. Um, and, you know, it's kind of a, 
you know, it's kind of a break, you know, you get a little bit warmer, warmer weather, but at the same time, you know, it's some good team, team bonding. You get to take a va- vacation together. You know, it's, it's a good experience as a whole. We, we went down there last year and we, we had a really good time. So I'm looking forward to going back. And then coming up the Virginia duel shortly thereafter, that's my homecoming. So I'll be there at the Hampton Coliseum. I think it'll be my 24th, 25th. I don't know. It's something like that. I've, I've been going since yeah, 1995. Like that. It's over in Hampton, right? Well, this is the 40th year of the event, but I've been to like 24 of them. So that's that's putting some okay. putting some okay. mileage on. But uh, if you ha- you haven't yeah. been there before, have you? No, I've never been to the Virginia Duels yet. I know it's in Hampton. Um, I mean, it's kind of a nice area, but I'm I'm excited to see it. You know, this is it's it's also nice being a part of a different team too now because you know I've been I've been at Northern. Illinois, where you know we traveled to some other MAC teams. I've been at Minnesota, where you traveled to Big Ten, and now you're at Old Dominion, where you travel to some some different teams too. So you know each each team has its own different type of schedule, so you get to see a bunch of different places. And you know it's nice traveling to some different spots, especially when you're not cutting late. You know it's a little more pleasant to travel. <laughs> yeah, because uh, now with the MAC East the way it is, with the the conference completely absorbing, I mean it's like the whole division has changed. It's like yeah, this is the MAC, but it's actually kind of like it's not as much the Mac as as you are used to as a competitor. Yeah, no, it's uh, honestly I I'm really pumped about adding seven other teams to the conference. Now you go from eight to fifteen, it's uh, it's it's a big swing, you know. Now you're you're going to wrestle some guys to the conference tournament that you definitely won't see throughout the year. So it makes some some more interesting matchups, and overall, it just strengthens the conference. So that's that's nice to see. It's what the second or third biggest conference now. Yeah. Yep. And one thing that uh, I wasn't going to ask this, cause I did, I told the the boys from blood round their podcast. They're both from Michigan. I was like, Hey, I got, I got Blyce on the phone. Any questions for me? He's like, can they win the Mac? I'm like, well, I wasn't going to ask it. Well, Hey, can you win the Mac? You know, um, I think if we get our guys firing on all cylinders, we got as good a shot as anybody. Right. Um, obviously Missouri's still a contender in the Mac. You got, you got Ryder, Lock Haven, Central Michigan. You still got some really good teams in, in the MAC, but I wholeheartedly believe in the guys that we send out on the mat. If they're if they're wrestling the way that they should be, there's no reason why we can't win the MAC. But obviously, you got to go out there and perform to the best of your ability. You can't go out there and expect that things are going to happen for you. You got to go take them. All right, now shifting gears back to Minnesota, because again, as an Old Dominion graduate living in Minnesota, and you being a Minnesota graduate living in you know, living in Old Dominion, we've got a little, little, di- little, little comparative speaking here. But NCAA's this year are in Minneapolis, U.S. Bank Stadium. So, from yeah. your experience of spending two years in the Twin Cities, specifically Minneapolis, a stone's throw yeah. away from U.S. Bank Stadium, what can the fans expect when they go to experience Minneapolis for the NCAA championships? Well, um, obviously, you're flighting. You're, you're well. You're going to fly right into. At- MSP, which is, it's about you know, a 19 hour it, drive depending on speed limits. So yeah, you're yeah, going to fly. Yeah. So since, since you're coming right into the twin cities, it's not like a terrible commute unless that traffic, I, I think the construction or traffic on what is it like I 35, that's, that's brutal around there. Trust me. Um, if people have lived in Hampton roads for long enough, they know that the, the, the construction from Fort Eustis to the Hampton roads bridge tunnel has been going on yeah. since 1985. So the construction's not an issue for people from this area or from that area now. Wow, that was strange to say. Yeah. No, no, no. Um, I, I would say it's going to be a good experience. You know, I, I know one of the main complaints of last year is, uh, especially for us, you know, if you're a primetime team and you want to bring a couple hundred people to the NCAA tournament, say you apply for 800 tickets and you only – you know, you're told you can only have 380 or four, 400, like, you know, you're going to be upset because that's, that's a lot of people who support your program, you know, whether they're, whether they're alumni, whether they're fans, parents, this, that, or the other, they're going to get told that they can't go. So, you know, at U.S. Bank Stadium, it's what, they're going to see 40,000 people. At I least. Mean, you can, uh, that's going to be the biggest NCAA tournament we we've, we've ever seen. So from from a spectator, you know, it's, it's great because it promotes the sport of wrestling. It gets pretty much double the amount of fans in there per session. And you're going to get a lot of people excited to be there because all of a sudden now people who, have, you know, struggle getting a ticket in years past are guaranteed to go. And there's also the fact that there is a lot of stuff to do 
right around U.S. Bank Stadium. I mean, it's it's a city. It's got a lot. I mean, if you like good food, if you like craft beer, if you like, you know, every of sports. I mean, there's there's concert venues. I mean, there's a lot of stuff to do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can go all over the Twin City and find something to do. See, there's the pitch. See, I live here now. This is this is my home now. I am I am married yep. into Minnesota, so I'm making a pitch to make sure people from that they aren't just avoiding it because ah, it's too cold, it's too far away. Yeah, you know what? It was it's colder in Pittsburgh. It was colder in Cleveland. Two of the three days, it was colder in St. Louis. It was colder in New York City. So uh, yeah, I yeah, just yeah, think yeah. I know if you're if you're you're you know you're you're a food snob or you're a craft beer snob as an adult now, uh, folks, you're gonna really enjoy Minneapolis. I'll just leave that <laughs> hanging out there. Minneapolis is a pretty clean, clean city for, for, you know, as far as we're talking about cities, there's, there's not a lot of bad parts of many. It's, it's for, for the most part, it's a really nice spot. Yeah. You're not going to, you know, stumble into places that, uh, you know, other locales, but, Oh, we turned down the wrong street. That's not going to happen near us bank stadium. No, no, no. And I mean, the, the other thing is too, is I, I think us bank stadium is near, uh, is near where the, uh, twins play too. Right. You know, you got that, that, that whole, uh, that whole little strip down there is very, North very North nice. Loop is pretty solid. Yeah, yeah, very very solid. As we wrap up here, episode sixty nine of the Monarch Mac. As Steve, any any questions, any comments, anything you want to throw at Monarch Nation as they uh, are formally getting introduced to you this season? Uh, you know, I'm I'm just excited to be with with the program. Uh, I I love working with our guys every day. I feel like we're making a lot of progress. Uh, you know, for for the most part, my job is a volunteer. You know, I'm not here to recruit. I'm just uh, I'm I'm here to here to get get guys ready to step on the mat, here to develop them into the best wrestler that they can be throughout their career as a monarch. And at the same time, moving forward, you know, we're we're trying to you know we're trying to train guys to be on the podium at the end of the year. And I want you know I I want guys to have higher goals. You know, we got kids who want to be national champs. So you know, if you set the you set the bar high, you know, you're going to, you're going to do well throughout your, throughout your college career as a com- competitor. So, uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to think that we, we got the guys to do it and, uh, you know, it's just, uh, going to have to put in the work. It's going to take some time, but we're, we're making steps in the right direction here. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to big things to come. This show is part of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, head over to matttalkonline.com.